Hey everybody, Dan here for Argo Comics, where we do not just publish independent comics. We support independent comics. I have picked up a number of independent comics, and I am going to get into them with you today. Uh, what I will do is ask you to like this video, to help out our metrics, uh, help us get some more visibility on all these great independent books. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you know when the new video is up. And without further ado, I'll get into some of these indies. Um, in actuality, uh, I do have uh, my proof copies for Argo 5 number 43. Okay, so I do have copies uh, that I was sent. I approved them. I wrote up the solicitation. Uh, so it will be available on Indie Planet. They've had a lot of submissions coming in, so I mean the book is done. Um, yeah, none too spoilery here. The book is done, and we have a whole uh, uh, new chapter with Leo Gondam doing the art. We had colors uh, Danielle Rodriguez doing pages one to four, and then Tio Pinheiro had uh, taken over. Um, so this issue is completed. It's just a matter of uh, the fact that, again, Indie Planet has gotten a lot of submissions lately. And they uh, have to proofread all those, put them on the website. They like to keep uh, uh, the new releases up on the home page for a little bit before moving along and then they get pushed over to the second page. So they like to give each person their just due. So it takes a little while. Uh, I'm contemplating uh, having my proofs available to people and usually people order directly from Indie Planet. They go directly from the printer to you. Uh, I guess with these proofs, if people, on occasion I've had people who wanted signed books, and usually that isn't how it works with the books going directly from the printer, but maybe what I'll start doing, since there's a lot of uh, delays, is uh, having the proof copies available for direct purchase, just for the people who really uh, don't want to wait. All right, now getting into other releases. I'll go with this first because it's an oddly shaped book. It's not full uh, comic size. Okay, uh, and I don't get a ton of manga, but I do like uh, the My Hero Academia uh, anime series. And I do like handbooks, which uh, actually just discussing on social media lately the fact that uh, there was a discussion of whether or not to have like a handbook style page or whatever and uh, spell out everything or even if an origin is needed in issue one or if it's okay to just have people discover the characters through the story which people uh, who know my work know that that's how I usually do it, is have everything come out within the story. Uh, you know, a handbook style page uh, kind of usually lays it all out. Even Origin Issue 1 uh, often lays it all out. And sometimes Origin Issue 1, um, if you're at a convention and you see this comic and you flip through it and the character never even makes it into costume because the writer has this, you know, epic in his mind. Um, unfortunately, because comics publishing is so tough that sometimes uh, they don't recuperate enough financially to continue. We don't see an issue two and issue three. And all you did was have an issue one of buildup. So that's why sometimes I'm not in favor of the origin uh, in issue one, being that 
it can lead to uh, us never seeing the hero in action. Um, but I, if you have the resources or you're going to complete five issues prior to going to press, maybe it's not a bad idea. But again, and again, if you're also distributing uh, online, then it's not like people are flipping through the book and seeing this. Uh, you can have, I guess, images, promotional images of the character all in costume, and uh, you're bypassing that and the fact that people could be a little more uh, patient in seeing the character because uh, get to get to the point where they're in costume and have their powers and everything like that, which is sometimes a, a big draw. I mean, if you're a writer capable of doing an origin story that uh, just stands on its own as a compelling story, that's fine. A lot of people come to superhero comics for the uh, action and the colorful costumes and everything like that. So if you don't have uh, that skill as a writer, then you're kind of uh, limiting your ability to uh, put out an entertaining uh, first issue. But that all said, I do like handbooks, even though I, you know, it's not my style to do it. I do like them, and this uh, is kind of like a, you know, you get an illustration, the name, the powers, uh, and the handbook is more kind of like in a sequential type thing, uh, which is pretty cool. It's not quite a, as dry as just reading paragraphs. So that's pretty cool to have it in this, huh? Here's Best Genus. So I just, uh, I'm a little behind on watching. He played a pivotal role in an episode I was just uh, watching, actually. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty cool uh, to have this handbook of, uh, I think My Hero Academia's done a good job of uh, bringing in some unique uh, characters. Uh, I'm sure the devoted Big Two fans who uh, would say, oh, he's all in green. Is he, uh, is he their Green Lantern? <laughs> you know, there's always uh, uh, the devoted Big Two fan who will discount any character that is not Big Two as a copy of a Big Two character. Uh, you know. Uh, oh, he has red and yellow on his costume. Is he your Shazam? Um, so, it just comes with the territory. Uh, I can understand people, uh, they have an affection for the big two characters, and they want to kind of, in their mind, defend their characters. Um, interestingly enough, though, uh, if there is a big two character who looks similar to the character from the other company, that is okay because they're both legitimate companies, so you're allowed to uh, have similarities there. But independence, uh, apparently you are not. So, um, at any rate, good little handbook. I'll enjoy, I enjoyed flipping through it already, and I'll enjoy looking through it some more. Um, here's a collection that came out from Image of Copra. Okay, so this is Cooper Round 7, their seventh uh, collection. Actually, uh, I went to many years ago a uh, store in Brooklyn, uh, Bergen Street Comics, and they were the original publisher of Copra because I guess creator Michelle Fife was most likely a customer there. And, uh, The book was distributed in that store and then gained uh, some word of mouth and became popular and uh, eventually ended up at Image. Now, it's funny, we're talking about homages. Uh, Michelle Fife was. Uh, quite open that this was a uh, homage to uh, a DC uh, property. Um, 
the Suicide Squad, the uh, John Ostrander uh, years. There's a pinup in here with some of the characters, but um, so yeah, he borrowed a bit. Well, from those characters, I've seen like Shade the Changing Man, a Doctor Strange homage, everything like that. Um, and again, I'm sure early on he heard all about it, but uh, again, he was quite open about the fact that he was sourcing. Uh, oh, here's kind of like the Shade the Changing Man looking dude. Um, so, people got over it. Now, again, it's a little different uh, different than what I'm talking about. And it has kind of like a dead shot uh, uh, homage. Um, it's a little different what I'm talking about where, uh, you know, you could have an in-bank character who's pretty original, but again, anything that they can latch on to to make it uh, seem like you uh, copied the character. Um, whereas this is more just like uh, an upfront homaging, but done in a completely different style. Uh, you can see his, Michelle's art style is quite uh, stylistic and uh, not really particularly uh, the only thing that I could even bring to mind is a little Sam Keith maybe I don't know I mean it's uh, really on his own track and obviously what had ind individual issues collections so I'm on board with it um, and, you know, it's image, so it's widely distributed. You'll be able to find it. Uh, there are a number of books from Antarctic Press come out. A whole bunch of them. Their flagship title, Ninja High School. They have 188 and 189 here. Uh, Take a look. Creation plot art, Ben Dunn. Plot script letters, Alfred Perez. Coloring, David Hutchinson. Editor, Doug Lynn. Um, so yeah, Ben is back on art on this. Uh, earlier issues, black and white. And color for quite a time. Beautiful art by Ben. I mean, Antarctic Press, about 30 years, so uh, you're always going to have top-notch quality. Uh, and I think we got Princess Azriel over there, and there's talk of a uh, prequel to Ninja High School her own little series. Um, so that'll be very cool. Uh, but it is a great uh, series. I think uh, I initially picked up a Ninja High School yearbook in 89, 1989. So I've been uh, with this series the whole time since then. And uh, Always a lot of love for this series. Uh, is like I said, 189. I think most likely gonna have the same creator. Yes, so same creator uh, lineup as the previous issue. So that what I just outlined. Uh, Okay, it's, I think, uh, well, that looks like a strawberry shortcake uh, pastiche, but it seems like uh, 
it's kind of getting you back to the roots of the uh, book um, where you have uh, Jeremy Feeple's uh, brother Ricky uh, kind of taking his spot. They, they did that for a while and then uh, yeah seems like uh, you know you got to stand in for uh, Itchy and uh, Princess Azrael. So it's kind of like they're almost recapturing the flavor. Here's a good look at all those characters. Kind of recapturing the flavor of the original. These are like the successor characters. Um, but yeah, it looks like a very cool issue. Um, I mean, they've always had a, a little bit of uh, homage going on in this book, where they even had, like, you know, the earliest issues, uh, Robo Gal Terry, which was kind of like a uh, Robocop uh, send off, and then we had, like, Ken Terminator, which was a uh, you know, Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Terminator, it's a style character. Uh, Arnie, uh, who is a much more thickly muscled Rambo type character. So, um, a mix of independent or original uh, characters and a few like this, you know, obviously looks kind of like a He-Man and a Ninja Turtle and a Sailor Moon. So, they've always uh, done that in Ninja High School to uh, great effect. Uh, again, 189 issues, I'm still there. So that's about as much endorsement as I can uh, give. And spinning out of Ninja High School, you had Tomorrow Girl, because there was a Tomorrow Man, who which was kind of like their Superman send up. And now uh, Tomorrow Girl has become a very major player for Antarctic Press. Because, um, I mean, if you look in Kickstarter, uh, female lead books uh, far and away lead the pack in sales. So uh, I think there's been a I mean, what was it? The, uh, I guess the 90s had the bad girl um, uh, wave where you had a lot of uh, female lead books. Uh, Lady Death being one of them. And uh, I guess she's kind of almost led the charge into... Uh, coming back into that direction. And with the advent of crowdfunding, uh, that became more and more popular, uh, especially when you saw the sales of some of what they call not safe for work books, um, where the female lead characters and there's a bit of, uh, you know, perhaps sexual content those books have been selling gangbusters. Uh, a lot of people who had uh, male lead books uh, wanted sales and jump ship and put out the female lead. Uh, you know, even if they were books that had like a social cause behind them or something like that, jump ship, go to the female lead book. Um, and, you know, have more success. Uh, and then, you know, some go even further and then you end up with uh, a lot of, uh, you know, explicit content and the money's coming in and the popularity is there. So it's a, it's a trade-off. I mean, I'm not uh, against any of that. Um, 
but you know it's an individual uh, choice and uh, you know I've had female leads I've had sorority about which is uh, six uh, female characters in the book so again it's a uh, it's not a bad thing but uh, you know it is it just uh, going to be all of uh, comics now. Um, and this, you know, Tomorrow Girl doesn't even go into that. I mean, look, it's just an anime style book. Um, or manga, I should say. Um, you know, we got some color section back here. So you got black and white and color in this. Um, So yeah, I saw someone trying to decide if they should continue uh, publishing on uh, on Facebook there, and uh, as a comment, try a female lead, and you know, then the character, then the creator rather is uh, at a crossroads of uh, does he you know toil and keep going with his character who he has a big fondness for, or does he grab grab the cash and, uh, you know, do a book where maybe his heart will be in it, but uh, who knows? That's a, an individual choice. But Tomorrow Girl number two, Antarctic Press. And we had three issues of exciting comics come out. Uh, okay, number 36. Now it's an anthology, Exciting Comics. I've had stories in Exciting Comics myself. We've had Nature Man, Big House Blues, Sumo Boy, uh, and Weirdo, all published throughout uh, earlier issues, issue 9 to about 20 or something. And then uh, we do have more chapters, uh, so they're just scheduling everything with all these submissions they've had. Um, but yeah, I do. Uh, I have turned in work for future issues of Exciting Comics. Um, this issue has Dominion Jack and the alternate. Can read the creators right there. Dominion Jack. Yeah, it looks like it has a cool art style, kind of like a Scott Collins school of uh, art. And then we have the alternate. Which is a bit of more like a Silver Age flavor to the art, I would say. Okay, so it's exciting 36. Exciting 37 has uh, Ibis, who is a uh, public domain character, I believe. So, Ibis the Mystic, we have in this issue. And uh, Dominion Jack. Okay, there's the creators again. Saves a, a little time by just freezing the screen and reading that. Now, Ibis. This is almost like a, uh, say, a cartoon style to the art. Almost what I would see in, a, in an animation. And Dominion Jack from the uh, previous issue, but with a different art style now, a little more of a realistic type style. Um, yeah, I'm liking it. Let's see. Uh, 
trying to think if it reminds me of someone. Maybe a little Gene Ha, maybe, or something. Get that realism going. Kevin Nolan. A little bit of that style. Like, I'm liking it. Looks good. Um, that's 37. 38. Of my friend Carlos Rafael's New Remarkables on the cover. The Remarkables. Yes, written, created by. See now, now we've gone back to four stories in the issue, which we had two the last couple. Um, I think some of the feedback from my own books in the earlier issues of Exciting Comics was that it was a little hard to follow, being that, you know, it was, uh, they did have four stories going on. So uh, the two might have been a little better uh, way to go. But now, again, they had the Dominion, Jack, and they had started Ibis. Uh, so and not wanting perhaps to keep the Remarkables and Jet Girl waiting, so they just chopped it up a bit. I mean, if you have every issue of Exciting, and maybe even if you uh, aren't reading as they come out and you kind of binge, then you could probably get a uh, little more complete look at the stories. Um, and again, we have this Remarkables cover here. And this was, I think, when it was released. That was uh, another Remarkables cover. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, I'm just going to put, again, the title page up for you to read. Freeze that and read the uh, creators uh, by yourself. Um, but Leonardo Sandoval does the art in the Remarkables and does great work there. You can see colors, lettering, everything is working well with the Remarkables. Um, Let's see. Well, we may have more issues, I mean, more pages than normal, because it looks like we get through a good number of pages for Remarkables. Okay, then they go into Dominion Jack, which I don't know if this is another different artist. Because this doesn't look like the uh, previous issue. I mean, I had done that for a number of issues uh, earlier on, having different artists. Being that it's independent comics, uh, sometimes many of the artists will have day jobs. So if you're going to just have one artist throughout the entire series, uh, and the issue isn't getting done kind of quick enough, that's why... Sometimes you'll see a book that has one or two issues a year. Um, and if you have a more ambitious publishing schedule, then by having, let's say, three artists, one working on one, one's working on two, one's working on three, one comes out, he's working on four, the next one, two comes out, that artist is now working on five, you can get the point there. Um, so you can publish with greater uh, regularity, uh, and as long as the readers are willing to accept that, because, I mean, even with the big two books, a lot of times there'll be uh, an initial artist who does maybe two issues. They have someone else. 
than they are someone else. And I mean, even those books uh, do that. I mean, a lot of independent books will just go with the one creator because uh, I guess they feel they have a vision of how it has to look. But um, yeah, I find it okay to have a number of uh, different artists. Uh, like I said, Dominion Jack seems to have a different artist. Still good quality, and that's what really counts for me. So as long as we don't have um, a letdown in the quality, Ibis seems to be the same artist. Again, with that more animated look. And this is Jet Girl. It says Jose Luis, but I know there must be, you know, a popular name. Because I know a Jose Luis, but this isn't his work. Um, but it's still good work. But it's more, probably more of a modern style. Um, with less rendering. A lot of today's comics have less rendering in it. I'm not saying detail, just like rendering. Um, all right, so that was Exciting Comics 38. Savage Dragon, number 266. Uh, this cover was, uh, I think, Gay Pride Parade cover. Uh, Dragon's wife is kind of like in a bondage outfit. So I saw a whole big debate on Twitter about it. Um, again, I'm not usually uh, uptight about such things. So, um, but like I said, there was a lot of chatter about this. Uh, and Savage Dragon. You know, you have his son now. Malcolm Dragon is actually the star. Uh, talking about the one in the orange shirt, not the little kid. That's his kid. Um, and, I mean, uh, they've done some stuff that's off the beaten trail in Savage Dragon. And, again, in this Twitter conversation, there was a lot of... Uh, things about whether or not uh, it was legit for Larson to, you know, throw in the, like, adult subject matter and stuff like that. Uh, and one thing about independent comics is that you don't have, like, a board of directors to go through. So uh, I think it's good sometimes to depart from what the big two are willing to do, just in the fact that if you're just doing what they are doing and or doing what you love about what you've read from them, then you're really not uh, providing any original content. Um, so, and it seems like movies and TV can do such a range of things and Sometimes it seems like uh, comics, they want to keep, keep you in a box of uh, what's been done before. So, you know, I for one uh, am still on Savage Trading. Talking to people who are quite outside the box. Got Gilbert Hernandez, Psychodrama Illustrated. Gilbert Hernandez, uh, best known for his work with his uh, brothers in Love and Rockets. Um, and again, they have gone way off the beaten trail, but it's that originality that uh, has people as big fans. Um, it's not for the kids. I'm um, trying to see if there is any pages here that um, I can show that 
I mean, despite no, despite there being uh, adult content, that's really not the the focus of the story. Um, I think Love and Rockets has been great in just providing commentary on the human condition um, and just really telling you an entertaining tale uh, which is more uh, grounded, uh, not as fantastical in nature. Well, here's the back cover. Kind of showing you the art style, and again, if you're a big two um, zombie, uh, the art style probably isn't going to do it for you. Um, but Heartbreak Soup, you can look into that from Gilbert Hernandez. Buy that uh, trade paperback, and you would not be disappointed. Scout Comics, Ranger Stranger, okay, um, about a park ranger. I used to go camping every uh, summer uh, growing up at a pop-up camper, two two-week trips to a campgrounds. So this is humor. Reading the uh, solicitation, I just kind of an impulse buy to kind of check it out. Uh, it looked good. Uh, let's see. Again, there's your credits to freeze on the frame. Read them out. Okay, Fearless Dawn. Steve Mannion's been putting out Fearless Dawn. This is a one shot. Fearless Dawn Cold. Okay. Um, Stephen Mannion, written and illustrated, pre press and design, Dan Berger, publisher, Frank Forte. So, I read that because it's a it's a little easier because it's just written and illustrated by Steve Mannion who's doing the bulk of everything. Well, this is a uh, book that is published uh, sideways. Chat I'm on reading on occasion. <clears throat> uh, I usually don't publish in that format, and I'm not in favor when the whole book is one way and then you. Have a pen up or whatever that you're supposed to turn the book around. I don't know for whatever reason. Uh, I don't like that. But uh, now Steve Mannion is a really great artist, and he's a great writer. Uh, he always has a good story to tell. But again, I'm not really going to. Uh, come down to exactly what an influence of his could be. It's greatly detailed inks. Um, well, for that, a little Bernie Wrightson, a little Adam Hughes. I mean, it's a, it's a really an odd combination, but definitely something that works. And I mean, uh, Pretty sure, yep, that this is like a painting he did. So he's really an artist, artist, you know. Um, who really excels at his craft. Um, so, yeah, Fearless Dawn, you've seen it before on, uh, published by Asylum Press, you've seen it before. And in the holes, you'll see him again. Oh, uh, 
what not publishing. I saw this Ninja Funk. Okay. Um, let's see. Shoot Jag Cannon. Shoot, wait, Shoot Jag and Karen. They did the story, Cannon. Uh, but Alex Regal did the art. Dennis Diuma and Rob Cannon did the lettering. They have all these different fonts. That's why I'm having a tough time with it. They're using like uh, metal band fonts. But the art, Alex Regal, uh, I do have a cover from him for Red Rooster and Pink Puma number two, which will be an eventual Kickstarter. So uh, he's doing the uh, interior art in this what? No, why not publish? Why not publishing book called Ninja Funk? Okay. And he has, uh, again, I don't know if it's probably markers, um, just a real different style, beautiful, beautiful work. Obviously, that's, you know, what got me into getting that commission um, for a cover. Uh, so yeah, I'm eager to put that out. And if you want a preview of his work prior to that cover, then you got this Ninja Funk Volume 1. All right. Uh, omnibus, I always like a good omnibus. We have Black Hammer Omnibus Volume 2. Um, okay, Dark Horse, mm -hmm. putting out Black Hammer. Uh, again, as with Copra, they had a number of homage characters as the stars of this book. Um, and uh, I guess all is forgiven because uh, it is a bigger publisher. Uh, if you're a small publisher, they would probably uh, give you a hard time. But, uh, like Colonel Weird, it seemed uh, influenced by Captain Comet. Uh, Golden Gal and the Golden Family there, uh, kind of like a uh, Fawcett Comics era uh, Marvel family. Um, and then we have Barbalion, kind of like a Martian Manhunter uh, type character. Um, but again, people seem to... Uh, be fine with it. Obviously, I'm down for it uh, because I'm buying the book. Um, there's one more that I'm thinking of. Uh, I mean, this anti god looks like he's got uh, heavy influence from the fourth world. Uh, but again, uh, it's done well, and it's a direct homage, not even you know trying to uh, disguise it. And yeah, it's been a great series. I they double dipped me a number of times with trades and omnibuses. Um, but yeah, it's. It's been uh, fantastic. Uh, such success. They've had a bunch of mini series, which I think they've been collecting in uh, on the bus as well. 
it's the world of world of backhammer. I think they've been blackhammer. They've been doing. Um, all right, we'll finish. Oh no, we have some more trades here. Uh, we're on the 45 minute mark here. Scott McTiernan versus the Forces of Evil. This just looked good. Looked like a whole bunch of interesting character designs. So, you know, and oftentimes if I'm going to order online, I'll uh, maybe Google up some preview pages or some reviews, make my decision. And I did so with this. It's from Image. So it shouldn't be hard to find. Scott McTiernan versus the Forces of Evil. Let me... Show some art. There's a lot of, a lot of panels, a lot of detail. I thought it looked good. Same thing here with this one. Major Threats. Dark Horse. Okay, you got Patton Oswald as one of the writers, who uh, many would know from the King of Queens uh, TV series, as well as a number of other television shows, and a legitimate fan of comics. So, uh, it looked like a superhero team, and it looked very interesting. Again, Web search for some preview pages, reading a couple of reviews, and it gets me on board to order. Minor Threats, Dark Horse. And here's a book, I guess they kind of collected it. I might have had a collection before already. When I saw this, I recall it was uh, kind of like well done back in the day. Class War. Rob Williams, Trevor Harrison, Trevor Foreman, uh, all of which went on, at least the second two went on to gr much greater acclaim. Um, and I just remember that Art had a really nice, like Brian Hitch. type style um, and Trevor and Travel Trevor and Travel both went on to do a lot of work um, even big two work let's see creator and writer Rob Williams artist Trevor Harrison artist Travel Foreman so they kind of broke that up Len O'Grady, colorist, Eddie Dayton, letter and graphic design, Drew Gill, production. Um, so this, again, image, it, it was independently published before that. Can't recall uh, company at this point. But it's kind of uh, like a, more of a military take on superheroes. I guess the superhumans uh, being created by the military. Um, and at the time, I just recall thinking it was very well done. Couldn't quite recall if I had a, a full collection of it. So, saw a solicitation, said, what the heck, and ordered it. All right, so that's going to do it for this haul video. Thanks for making it to the end, whoever did. And again, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications on the future uh, episodes, and I will be back with more independent comics very soon.